What's up everybody, my name is Scott and you're watching Kentucky Ballistics. About a year ago, I shot Stretch Armstrong with a 50 BMG and before that, I shot him with a 500 Magnum. Turns out he's pretty bulletproof. He'll stop a 22, a nine millimeter, and he'll even stop a 45, but he will not stop a 500 Magnum or a 50 BMG. I had a lot of you request that I shoot VacMan. It turns out that VacMan is pretty hard to find, but I finally got my hands on one here he is compared to a Stretch Armstrong. You can see that there's a pretty big size difference between the two. Stretch Armstrong is full of corn syrup or something like it. He's really soft, but when you apply hard, fast pressure, he becomes really stiff. Vacman is full of a bunch of beads. You can hear him moving around in there. He comes with this pump. You plug it into the side of his head and then you suck the air out of it. Now he's really rigid because all those beads are compressed together. He seems pretty tough when you suck all the air out of him, but I don't know if he's gonna to be tough enough to stop a bullet. When you push this button here, all the air comes back into him, and then you can stretch him and move him around again. The only problem with shooting Vacman is as soon as we poke a hole in him, we're not gonna be able to suck the air out of him and compress those beads again, so we only get one shot. So we're not gonna start out with a small round and work our way up to a big round. We're just gonna jump right to 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum, and hopefully we hit him dead center. But before we shoot Vacman, I have a few Stretch Armstrongs with us today, and I thought we could shoot them with a few different calibers that we didn't get to use before and see how he holds up. I wonder if I can rip this thing in half. Ugh, man, I'm gonna just do it like this. Ugh. Jump. Ugh. Ah, I give up. He's too tough. Oh. Okay, we got Stretch Armstrong set up. Let's see how he holds up against our Glock 31 chambered in 357 SIG. We're gonna be loaded up with some 125 grain jacketed hollow points. I've noticed a lot of you ask why I'm not wearing hearing protection. I do wear hearing protection. I wear earplugs. You just can't see them on camera. Ooh, I don't know if he stopped that. Okay, let's check him out. He's got some goop coming out of him. Let's see if it went through the back. Oh, I think it would have if this cinder block wasn't here. He's got a little mark on the back. Let's see if we can find that bullet. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Well, I want to hit him one more time, but without the cinder block behind him and see if it stops it. Now he's set up on the cinder block with the opening behind him. So he's held up, but there's nothing touching his back. I, I think that blew right through him. So there's where we hit the first time and there's where we hit the second time. He's losing quite a bit of goop. There's a hole coming out the back, and you can tell he's losing some goop out of that hole as well. The round went through him, hit right there, and here it is on the ground. And that little round is all kinds of wadded up. Okay, now let's set up a new Stretch Armstrong and see how he holds up against 10 millimeter. Okay, we have a Glock 20 chambered in 10 millimeter, and we're gonna be loaded up with some 180 grain jacketed hollow points. I can't really tell where we hit. It looks like we may have hit him in several spots because he was doubled over. We don't have a hole out the back. Let's shoot him one more time. Oh, I don't think he stopped at that time. So there's where we hit this time. It's pretty obvious that it made it through the back and there's the round. Pretty good expansion out of that thing. Just for fun, let's shoot him one more time with the 10 millimeter, but this time we're gonna use an RIP round. There's where we hit with the RIP round, and I don't think that we made it through with that. Oh, what is that? Oh, I think that's it right there. I don't think it did anything. Look at that. The RIP round did not do anything. Okay, one more Stretch Armstrong. 
Well, if he can't stop a 357 SIG and he can't stop a 10 millimeter, I highly doubt he's gonna be able to stop this, but we're gonna do it anyways. This is a Magnum Research Desert Eagle chambered in 429DE. And we're gonna be loaded up with some 210 grain jacketed hollow points. <laughs> Maybe we should shoot him one more time. I think we hit just a little high. <laughs> Okay, that was a better hit. <laughs> okay, so our first shot, I guess you could say that we hit a little high, <laughs> went right through him. Second shot, we hit right here, and it looks like we blew through the back pretty easily. I'm not seeing the round on the table. I don't see it stuck in the wall. There it is. <laughs> that thing expanded a lot. Set up a new cinder block. All right, the time has come. Let's see if Vacman can stop a 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. Let's plug in our little pump here. Yeah. There we go. Looking good. I want to be honest. I feel kind of bad shooting this thing because they're really hard to find, and it's actually a really cool toy. I wish you the best of luck. Okay, we got Vacman set up, and like I said, we're only gonna get one shot at this, so we gotta make it count. We're gonna be using a Smith & Wesson Performance Center 500 Magnum with a three and a half inch barrel. And we're gonna be loaded up with a 350 grain jacket at hollow point. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that was awesome. Okay, so we have beads everywhere. Here is Vacman's arm. <laughs> Let's see where we hit. Oh yeah, looks like we had a really good hit. And he just Oh, wow. Went right through him and blew him to pieces. Wow, there's a lot of beads inside him. Well, that's what's inside Vacman. So we blew through him, and then of course we hit our cinder block. And there is what's left of the bullet. There's the back. And there is what's left of the round. There's little bitty pieces of the rubber and some bead pushed into that lead. That's crazy. So the last time we shot a Stretch Armstrong with a 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum, we used the 10 and a half inch barrel and one Stretch Armstrong was not enough to stop that round. A lot of you asked how many Stretch Armstrongs would it take to stop a 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum? Well, we've already shot three today. One of them he's done, but two of them are still good. And I have one more new Stretch Armstrong. So that gives us three we can line up. Let's blast them with a 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum with the 10 and a half inch barrel and see if that's enough to stop the round. Okay, we got our three Stretch Armstrong set up and we're gonna be using a Smith & Wesson Performance Center 500 Magnum with a 10 and a half inch barrel. 
And again, we're using the 350 grain jacket at hollow points. <laughs> oh my gosh. It is raining Stretch Armstrong. All right, let's check it out. There's our first one, and I can already see some round into our second Stretch Armstrong. Let's see here. I don't think he made it out of the second one, honestly. I don't feel anything in this one, so I think he's in Stretch number two. Get the grass off of him. <laughs> oh, I think I see it. There it is. There's the round. Oh my goodness. Ugh, this is so bad. Get off of me. There's the round. Well, that's it for today's video. It turns out Vacman is not 500 Magnum proof. I didn't really expect him to be, but it was still pretty cool when he exploded. Stretch Armstrong, still pretty bulletproof, and it turns out it only takes two of those to stop a 500 Magnum. I thought that was pretty impressive. Hey, if you want to support Kentucky Ballistics, the easiest way to do that is to check out my clothing. There's a link in the description down below. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure and give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed to Kentucky Ballistics, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Be sure and hit that bell for notifications. And while you're at it, share today's video with a friend. Also, be sure to check me out on Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links to all those can be found in the description down below or on my website, KentuckyBallistics.com. Again, my name is Scott. Thank you so much for watching Kentucky Ballistics, and I'll see you next time.